Welcome to the 1000 Day Sober Podcast. My name is Lee Davy. I'm not an alcoholic. I refuse to be anonymous. I'm someone that doesn't drink alcohol and I spend every waking moment of my life helping other people do the same, like right now. How's it going, folks? This is a monologue. No guests today, just me talking to you about something that I found very, very interesting. But before I do that, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be running a masterclass, a masterclass uh, webinar, uh, around 90 minutes, I should imagine. And it's how I became someone that doesn't drink alcohol. So if you want to know how I became someone that doesn't drink alcohol and started to build my rocket to fly to Mars, then you will want to tune into that. It's going ahead um, January 22nd, I believe around 10, 10 10.30 Pacific Standard Time. And if you want to learn more about that workshop, get to www.1000daysober.com and click on the workshop page and uh, you will be able to sign up for a free 90-minute webinar with me talking about how I became someone that doesn't uh, drink alcohol. It's full of absolute banging content, okay? Uh, what else we got going for you? If you are interested in, we have a group coaching program on January the 31st, uh, the Strive Method for Addiction. It's going to run for six months. Uh, it's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. If you want to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol, then come along and join that. If you are worried that you're drinking and you're, you're a little bit worried about that, don't worry. We don't ask you to stop drinking until month four, and even then only when you're ready. So it is it's perfectly acceptable for you to come on and join, even if you're drinking, as long as you're not drinking when you're doing your assignments, and as long as you're not drinking when you come on our coaching calls, right? So again, go to the website and you'll be, to, be able to sign up for our group coaching program, Strive, Strive Method for Addictions, uh, starts on January 31st. And if you just want to join Strive and just be a member of an amazing support group and get access to loads of goodies that you don't get anywhere else, then again, head to the website and... Uh, you'll be able to sign up for that as well or send us an email and we will tell you how to do that and join the Strive subscription. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about a book that I read called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Okay, now the crux of this book is that Neil believes he had a conversation with God. You know, that guy who created the earth and the universe in seven days and all that malarkey. Well, Neil thinks he had an actual conversation with him. All right. Now, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. All right. So the God that Neil had a conversation with, like pretty much I'm getting out of it is like the biblical God. I don't believe that that, that kind of God exists myself personally. And a lot of you will and a lot of you won't. I don't think that's the point. Because um, as somebody who doesn't believe in, in that description of God, reading the book, what I was grasped by was the unbelievable amount of wonderful information in there about how one can question their own thoughts and feelings around life. And I thought it was an incredible, incredible book. I don't care if Neil made it all up and wrote to himself. It doesn't matter. I got a lot out of it. And I want you to um, really strongly consider reading. I've only read book one of three, I believe is a trilogy. Um, but uh, I want to, I'm going to talk about it in this episode. So have a listen to it, see what you think, uh, but definitely reach out and um, buy it. Uh, episode highlights include readiness for the truth, thoughts on scarcity, um, serendipity and synchronicity, questions and answers and what to do with them, thoughts and how they lead to experience and leaning into gratefulness. So without further ado, I'll shut the hell up, leave you in the capable hands of myself. This is talking about Neil Donald Walsh's conversation with God. Thank you for listening. Hope you're doing okay, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're doing okay, children. If there's any children listening to this, hope there's not. Um, anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about a book I just finished called A Conversation with God, An Uncommon Dialogue by Neil Donald Walsh. It's a book one in three books. I am going to read the other two at some point, but I just wanted to briefly talk about it today. Uh, but before I do that, Sunday, January 31st, we're going to be running Strive Methods for Addictions Group Workshop Experience. Please, please, please come and join it. It's 795 bucks. 
pounds, sorry, pounds, if you pay in full, 900 if you want a payment plan. And that is absolutely golden value um, spread over six months, right? Especially when you consider how much money you actually spend on the grog in the first place. It is life-changing. We can have as many testimonies as you want. Uh, 62% of people who graduate are still not drinking after a year. I think that's fantastic. And as everybody says who takes it, this is not about alcohol, folks. This is about changing your life. This is about understanding your power and stepping into it and becoming a completely and utterly amazing, beautiful, conscious human being. That's what it's all about, okay? So if you want to get into that, get into that. Also, I've created a... A little mini series for those of you who are new and don't really know much about 1000 Days Sober. If you go to www.1000daysober.com, you'll see a little page there called The First Rung. If you leave your email address, we'll send you some um, videos, including six assignments from the Strive Method for Addiction. One from Stuck Phase, one from the Thought Phase, one for the Ready Phase, one for Initiative, one from Vigilance, and one for Evolution. So get over there and sign up for The First Rung. Uh, You will love it for sure. Um, The other thing is if you would like 10% off future purchases of everything we do at 1000 Days Sober, then we would need your help. We would like you to fill in a little survey for us. Email us 1kdaysober at gmail.com. Put the title survey and say you're up for it. We'll send you the survey and you can have 10% off any future purchases. Finally, if you want to join Strive, our wonderful, beautiful, intimate group, it is £40 a month. Uh, What you get from that, you get access to our Marco Polo groups, you get access to our private Facebook feed, you get access to a weekly coaching call uh, by yours truly, all the support you need, really. You get a a free workshop every month from one of our 1,000 Day Sober coaches. So that is pretty cool as well, all right? All at 1,000daysober.com. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about this book, Conversations with God, and essentially what we're looking at here is the author, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, believes that he had conversations with God and wrote about it in a book. And, well, he wrote about the dialogue. And the way that it's written is really good. It's literally just a stream of, it's just a conversation. So basically it's Neil asking God questions and God answering them. And First of all, if you don't believe in God, uh, a biblical God, like I don't, uh, you might scoff at this and think, what a lot of bullshit. Um, But I would like you to think that actually believing that there is, that it's, no, I don't like you to think anything. I'm not even going to go there. Um, All I will say is I am not religious. I do not believe in a, a biblical God, but I got so, so much value out of this book. Because it doesn't really matter if Neil was talking to God or Neil was talking to himself. Um, If he was talking to himself, this is a man of extreme um, understanding on how the world works and on how human being works. I got a lot out of it, a lot out of it. And I just want to talk about four components of it in in a little bit and and urge you to go buy it. Okay. So the first thing, as soon as you open it, there's like a little introduction on the first page. Uh, Neil says, we are all led to the truth for which we are ready. We are all led to the truth for which we are ready. And we go through life complaining and moaning and groaning that things aren't as they should be. And we get divorced and we get illness and we get disease and people die and we lose our job and our partner breaks our heart and the you know, the dog eats our homework, all those kind of things. And we get stuck in this thought process of scarcity, you know, like um, that this, oh, poor me, that um, that this is likely to happen because of me and my circumstances, or we blame everybody around us for what is happening to me. And what I find in life is that the more that we come from this epicenter of scarcity and the more that we believe that uh, everything bad is going to happen to us and we don't have control of what's going on in our lives, that will become true. That will become our reality. Okay? So I like to look at things in a different way. Um, It doesn't come naturally to me. It's because my programming from birth was to be a pessimist, to be a cynic. So I have to check in with myself or surround myself with people who pull pull me up 
when I'm acting like a cock, all right? But I like to think that everything happens for a reason, all right? Everything happens for a reason. And that everything that painful that happens to me happens uh, because there's some good that's going to come out of it. Or I'm, I wasn't ready yet to experience the joy of that. Okay. So um, this morning I had a conversation with a potential investor. We were talking about where 1000 Days Sober is as, a, as an entity. Um, he likes to look at business structures like they're, like they're living, breathing things. Um, and he's like, you know, it is where it is supposed to be right now. It's where it's supposed to be right now. Um, and Lee, you are ready to receive money. Like I feel comfortable to give you money because I know that you're ready for it. Okay. So I like to, I like to believe that. And I, and I like to put out signals to the universe, to God, to um, whatever kind of like higher power you want to choose to um, put something out there to um, that I am ready to receive more and more and more. I'm powerful enough to take it. If you want to give me more love, I will take it. If you want to give me more money, I will take it. If you want to send more people to 1000 Days Sober, I will take it. We can handle it. I, Lee Davey, am ready to handle this. And this is why when people say, Lee, how come you read Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking Permanently and Stop Smoking, An Easy Way to Control Alcohol and Stop Drinking? And I read them and I didn't stop. Or I stopped and I started again. Did the book work for you, Lee, and then didn't work for me? No, what I think was I was ready for the truth to reveal itself. I was ready for the truth about alcohol. The universe or the, 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 the energy that we don't understand is kind of like driving us and pushing us along. In this instance, God, right? It is channeling me and pushing me towards that book when I'm ready to read that book. Okay, I give you another example. I had Jack Canfield success principles underneath my bed, gathering dust for a full year before I read it, and it led to the catalyst of me leaving my job. A year earlier, the same book was gobbledygook to me. It did. I just, just I was reading it, thinking this is just bullshit. This guy's fucking crazy. A year later, I'm reading it. I'm going, this guy's got a real point. <gasps> I have got 100% responsibility because my my. My whole experience of life had changed. So this is really important because like the Stride Method for Addictions, in the first three months, we don't even want you to stop drinking alcohol. But when we tell you that, you don't want to join because you, you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the point of that? Why would I pay money to do something I'm not ready for? <laughs> Because that unpreparedness, that unreadiness and the coaching that happens during those three months is vital to you being ready to experience and accept the truth when it is put at your doorstep. When I come knocking on the door, donk, da, da, donk, 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 and start talking to you about alcoholism, being an invisible, violent, and dominant belief system, it's my job to make sure you're ready to receive that information and to use that information to kickstart you onto a sprint like you've never experienced before, where the finishing line is you are living a conscious life much more than you're living an unconscious life, okay? So we're all led to truth for which we are ready. We are ready. So whenever you get yourself in a funk and you have a case of fuck it and you drink and you get really down on yourself, you might just not be ready yet. And that is okay. What I would check in to yourself and say is, where am I blocking myself I'm blocking my ability to be ready. Me, 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 me. In the episode that I did before this, the monologue that I did before this, you know, when I talked about that question, um, what would I do if I only had a year left? I told you, didn't I, that the realization that I had out of that is the only person who can stop me from progressing is me. I block myself. So when I'm not ready, I'm blocking myself somewhere. I'm not ready to take coaching. I'm not ready to take mentorship. I'm not ready to experience suffering. I'm not ex ready to experience joy. I'm not ready to talk my shame. I'm not ready to be vulnerable. I'm not physically ready yet to do this, this. I'm not spiritually ready yet. I'm not mentally ready yet, but it's me. 
take 100% responsibility for your life, right? What else did I write down here from the book? Uh, God says straight out of the bat. So <laughs> Neil says, uh, fires a million questions to God. And God says, do you really want an answer to these questions or are you just venting? Think about that. Do you really want an answer to these questions or are you just venting? Think about all the questions you want answers for right now around alcohol. Okay. And are you just venting? Or do you want answers because you're going to do stuff with it? So let me give you a, just a straight up example, just smack you right in the face of it. Okay. The vast majority of people listening to this podcast, I am going to guess, is doing so because they have a problem with alcohol or they think they might have a problem with alcohol or they had a problem with alcohol, stopped drinking, and now they are a little bit unsure about who they are what it is they're supposed to be doing in the world, and they're having trouble with their relationships and kind of like fitting in about how things work. Okay? That's why you're here, the vast majority of you. All right? And now, and while the number one source of people who end up on the Strive method uh, for addictions, group coaching programs do come from listeners from the podcast, it's nowhere near enough compared to the number of people who listen to this podcast. Are you just asking your questions because you want to vent or do you want an answer? Because as God was saying to Neil Donald Walsh, if you really want an answer, then you really should be very specific about what question you're asking and what you're going to do with the response. So if you want to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol and you say to me, Lee, what is the best way for me to do that? I would say, hands down, join the Strive Method for Addictions and commit yourself to being a striver for life. How many of you are going to do that? How many of you are going to say, how much is it? 795. <laughs> oh, um, I don't have 795, but I'm going to do everything I can in my power to find that money and make it happen. Get out of your own way. How many of you are going to be confident enough to go to people who have money and ask for it, knowing you're going to have to tell them that the, what you want the money for is to help you stop drinking alcohol? How many people are going to be vulnerable enough to do that? How many of you are not able to do the stripe effort for addictions because you haven't even told your partner that you've got a problem and you feel incredible amount of shame going to them to tell them that you need to work on this, this problem for six months in a workshop. How many of you are worried that they will turn around and say to you, six months, just go to an AA meeting. And you have to say to them, that won't work. My problem is that bad that I need six months of help and more. How many of you are ashamed to ask that question? So do you really want an answer to these questions or are you just venting? How many of you do not want to come on to Marco Polo, our um, video recording app we use to have discussion? How many of you don't want to come on a coaching call in case I coach you and ask you really uncomfortable questions in front of other people and that you have to talk about things you don't want to talk to about? How many of you are worried that you feel silly and stupid? and be a little bit ashamed and start looking around you thinking, I don't know as much as these people know. How many of you are worried that you'd get angry when me and our other members of Strive start pointing out your blind spots from a place of loving kindness? How many of you think that you just don't have the time to do this, but you know really that it's the most important thing that you should be carving out time to do? How many of you are a little bit ashamed that you love drinking so much you don't really want to stop at all? Do you really want an answer to these questions or are you just venting? Will you have a think about that, okay? The other thing that I loved about this book was Neil Donald Walsh said to God, um, he basically, I can't remember the exact point, but it's like, why is this happening to me? Why isn't that happening to me? Why aren't you helping me with this? Why aren't you helping me with that? What's the answers to all of my problems in life? And God said to him, I keep showing you the signs. I keep showing you the answers, but you're ignoring them. I keep showing you the signs. I keep showing you the answers. I keep directing you in the right way, but you're not looking. All right. This reminds me of serendipity. Now, before 
Last night, I was using the word synchronicity. Some of you might have saw the little video I did on social media around synchronicity. But I now like the word serendipity. So I keep seeing the word Zion everywhere. Funnily enough, one of my mentors is called Zion. And I reached out to him uh, this morning and said to him, hey, is everything all right? I keep seeing your name everywhere. And he's like, all good here, mate. The other word I keep seeing everywhere is Augustine. So I've made a note in my to-do list to investigate more about why God or the universe or whatever you want. I'm just going to call it God from now on, right? Where God is showing me and why he's showing me Augustine. Zion, is he, do I need to pay attention to the alphabet? Is there an A to Z thing going on here? Is this a bookend thing? Is the, is the word Augustine important to me? Is the word Zion important to me? What do these words mean? Augustine was uh, a guy who went into the desert, the Sinai desert for 40 years just to be with God. Is that what I have to do? Do I need to spend the rest of my life in the desert? Do I need stillness in my life? What is what is going on here? Zion in, um, you know, uh, Bob Marley speak is about like freedom, right? Liberation. Is there something there? Synchronicity means that you're on point. Serendipity means you're on point. You are living a life in accordance with your purpose. You're in flow. And that is why you see these serendipitous moments, these synchronicities, because you're in touch with the greater energy that is flying around us that everything is made from. All right? And when we don't see these things, we're blocked. And when we're blocked, it's like, oh, okay. Um, I'm blocked. Like, where am I blocked? But to see these signs, just keep your eye out. It, and, and, and one of the things that God says in his book is, don't worry about the how. Like, how am I going to make this work? Don't worry about that. Just believe wholeheartedly that it's already happening. And the how will take care of itself. It's a form of surrender. I hope you can see that you don't have to believe in God for this, for these, this dialogue to spark introspection and, and, and internal dialogue and questions. So the signs are out there. Where are they? What do they look like? What are they telling you? Pay attention. Okay. Thoughts, words, action, experience. So God says in his book, all forms of creation start with thought. We have a, a thought, hmm, a drink would be nice right now. Then we have words. We either say them in our head, a drink would be great right now, or we tell them to somebody, hey, a drink would be really good right now. And then we take an action. I'm going to have a drink, and we drink. And then we have an experience, which is likely linked to emotion and feeling, which could be, I feel relaxed. I feel a buzz, whatever it is, and the loop forms round, and now you've got a complete code or a complete recording that the brain can like stick into the file. And next time we have that thought, I want to drink, it just pulls the coding out and off the neurological and neurochemical concoction does its work, right? So what we think about becomes the most important aspect of this if we are to believe this as our truth. So processing and, and doing like the homework assignments in Stripe Method for Addiction, processing in Stripe private Facebook group, or if you're a part of the 1000 Day Sober private Facebook group, really important. How we think is far more important than what we think about. And also understanding that resistance or our ego is constantly chattering inside our mind. And that isn't necessarily anything that we want to pay attention to. Lee, you're a dick. You're talking about God. You're going to lose listeners. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Thank you for that comment. See you later, alligator. Right? I don't have to turn that into a feeling of shame and guilt and anxiety and stress, I could just say, oh, okay, that's interesting that something's going on. A part of my external, outside-in, um, unconscious thinking is going about there, you know? So 
You even heard me. How many times have I said since we started? Um, I, well, I said it on. Oh, um, let's use, I'm going to just use the word God instead of God or universe or whatever. It's because there is stigma attached to using the word God, right? And I'm my subconscious is aware of that and is making excuses for me. God, it is. I'm cool with that, right? Thought, really, really important. What are you thinking about? How are you thinking about it? And understanding that the way we think, our stinking thinking, as people in AA say, will lead to the formation of words, which leads to actions, which leads to our experience. All right. Finally, I'm going to uh, do this last one. I've just got the quote down here in the book. This is a question. This is God. This is a question that's been asked. Oh, Neil Donald Walsh says, does that mean I cannot ask for anything I want? Are you saying that praying for something actually pushes it away from us? And he, God says, uh, this is a question which has been asked through the ages and has been answered whenever it has been asked, yet you have not heard the answer or will not believe it. The question is answered again in today's term and today's language. Thus, you will not have that for which you ask, nor can you have anything you want. This is because your very request is a statement of lack. And your saying you want a thing only works to produce that precise experience, wanting into your reality. The correct prayer is therefore never a prayer of supplication, but a prayer of gratitude. When you thank God in advance for that which you choose to experience in your reality, you in effect acknowledge that it's there in effect. Thankfulness is thus the most powerful statement of God, an affirmation that even before you ask, I have answered. Therefore, never supplicate, appreciate. So rather than saying, I want to help a million people overcome addiction, I'm running two miles a day and I'm saying I am helping a million people overcome addiction. When I'm saying I want to create a multi-million dollar business that I can use the overflow to help people overcome addiction in third world countries, I'm saying that that is already happening. Because if you say that you want something, then you're saying to God that I want it. It's not, it's not happening. So all what happened is you'll just keep wanting it. I want to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol. Please, please, please start saying I am somebody that doesn't drink alcohol. You can be someone that doesn't drink alcohol and every now and then you're drinking alcohol. Okay. But if you say I want to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol, I want to be sober. I want to be done. You want, 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 want. You're not creating a reality of presence and gratitude, right? That is what God is saying in that statement. Start talking as if it is happening. Start coming from a place of abundance. If that is difficult for you and you think that is a little bit woo-woo, then lean on sufficiency, lean on appreciation, and lean on gratitude. Everything that I have in my life right now is sufficient. Everything that is happening in my life right now is happening the way that it should be. I have an incredibly abundant life. I am so grateful that I have... I approve of myself, I am secure, uh, and I am in control of most of the things that I can be in control of in life. And the things that I am not in control of, because I live right now, me, in California, I'm, I feel safe, All right? I am so grateful that I get to do this for you. I am so grateful that I had four people on our coaching call this morning. I'm so grateful that Neil Donald Walsh wrote this book and had his conversation with God and shared it with people. I am so, so grateful for my wife being there with me. I'm grateful for this microphone. I'm grateful for this laptop. You know, I'm grateful for all the pain and misery I went through as a drinker, which has enabled me to connect with you from a place of understanding that I would not have been able to do had I never drank before or never had a problem with drinking right? I'm so grateful. Grateful, gratitude, sufficiency, appreciation, so important. So important, okay? All right. Hope that was okay for you. Conversations with God, Neil Donald Walsh. If you want to learn more about everything that we're doing here at 1000 Days Sober, get over to our website, www.1000daysober.com. Instagram, same, 1000 Days Sober. YouTube, same, 1000 Days Sober, okay? Tell people about us. We are changing and saving lives. So tell people about us. Much love, everyone. Bye. Bye.